What's up, game devs? T Chan here, and welcome to episode 32 of Game Dev Lowdown, where I chat with today's most experienced game developers seven days a week. We will learn about their backgrounds, the obstacles they have to overcome, and the tools they use to reach success. And today's featured guest is Eduardo Ortiz Frau. Eduardo, it is go time. Are you ready? Hey, yes, definitely. Awesome, awesome. So Eduardo is a freelance game audio designer, and he has been working in games since 2011. He's worked on titles such as The Stanley Parable and the latest game, Everything. So go ahead, Eduardo, give us a bit about your personal life and how you got started in the game industry. Um, okay, so I am a game audio designer based in Austin, Texas. Even uh, I'm originally from Puerto Rico, but I've been living here since 2011, which is when I started working in games here. So basically, I, I studied audio engineering and music composition in college. So I came here fresh, kind of like I had experience with audio engineering on the music side. You know, I, I worked quite a few years in that, but I didn't have any experience in games. So I knew it was an avenue I could explore and I was eager to do so. I moved away from Puerto Rico, kind of like seeking new avenues. I came to Austin. I knew this was a city where there was definitely game development going on. There was a lot of indie developers here. So I just, you know, I basically just started started seeing how I could get involved. And I went to this uh, kind of like a meetup here. And kind of like by chance, I didn't even know that was going on yet. Uh, I went there because they were interviewing the creator of Adventure Time. And I really liked Adventure Time at the time. And somebody heard it and told me about it. So I just went and I realized that it was a game development um, event. So basically, I went to the moderator and told him that who, you know, who I was, who, uh, as in, I wanted to get into games and do audio specifically. And he told me to talk to this guy who was at that, at that event. I immediately walked up to this guy who was Robin Arnold. He was a sound designer for Anti Chamber. And he he, he did a Stanley Parable with me. We, we both handled the, the sound design for that games. And basically, I just went up to him and I was like, hey man, you know, I, wanted to, I want to introduce myself. Um, I want to get into this industry. I want to work with you. You don't have to pay me anything. I just have to, I just want to learn. And he kind of like immediately said, okay, let's do it. And so that was it. So I basically just randomly stepped into a game, you know, development event and immediately went up to this guy who was doing sound and just asked to help him out. But it's like very, I seen, of course, I wanted to learn, but it's like I wasn't expecting him to pay me just because I didn't have any experience. I was just like, all right, how do I start right now? Right. So it's like, and if you just want experience and you want to start as soon as possible, then Kind of like getting some sort of mentor is always a very good idea. And yeah, and that's basically what I did. And with him, I just, you know, I he, he, I just started working with him. And kind of like pretty fast after that, a, a couple months later, he just, you know, he did start to pay me because I was actually, you know, I was becoming more reliable in terms of actually producing good work. And then, you know, kind of like by the year, we were doing Stanley Parable together and we we're working on some other games together. And then after Stanley Parable, I kind of just took off on my own uh, because through him, I met a lot of people in the industry and I was able to start making a network uh, for myself. Making Stanley Parable definitely helped with that because we didn't know it was going to be the success it was. And the creator is a very good friend of mine. We're all good friends. And yeah, I remember that time in our lives where everything was uncertain. He, like the creator, David Reed, and he has spent four years of his life making this game, and he didn't know what was gonna happen. Nobody knew, and we definitely didn't know it was gonna blow up like that. But it did, and that definitely opened up a lot of doors for me. I love that because you made the effort to go out and meet people, and you met this one, this one person that basically changed like your whole career. He gave you all yes. this opportunity and helped you network with so many people. That That is awesome. Yes. And I mean, you, okay, especially, I would say it doesn't matter if you're a freelancer or you're trying to get work within, you know, a AAA company or a bigger company. Being able to do that definitely helps. But being a freelancer myself, especially, that helps. Being able to just talk to people and, 
and kind of like have the confidence to not not know that you know why as in i didn't go to him saying hey i know how to do this it's like i want to learn but having the confidence that you're you're, you're able to learn uh, just like everybody else in, in the industry started at one point and they learned as they went you know that that you are able to learn you don't have to be the best you don't have to know everything you just have to be eager and and have like basic basically be willing to put in the effort uh, and it does take effort right but just be willing to put in the effort be willing to learn most definitely and when it comes to auto engineer what is something that we don't know about it but we should know about okay so audio it's it's a big part of development and i feel like a lot of developers uh, that maybe don't have a, as much experience they don't take into account how important audio is and that it does take time and that a good a good sound designer slash audio engineer, uh, it, you know, it takes it, it takes time to to make a game sound good. It takes a lot of support, as in, you know, programming support. Um, and so basically, don't leave audio for the end. Mm. Start start thinking about audio, kind of like if you come from the beginning. It doesn't have to be from the very beginning, but kind of like at least halfway. Uh, and basically, just think of audio as any other part of development. Meaning, if you want your art to look good, then you need to make sure somebody is able to spend time on it, right? And the same thing with music, the same thing with sound design, the same thing with, with the systems in your game, the programming. Every aspect of development takes time. And it takes somebody, you know, sitting and getting to know your game well, uh, being able to implement a uh, easily and you basically just don't tell the sound designer oh make me this sounds they'll they'll deliver them to you and then you kind of do whatever you want with them and basically it takes effort right mm -hmm. and but there's a big payoff uh, because sound uh, can really change the experience for a player like sound conveys a lot of information to a player that doesn't necessarily need to be conveyed with visuals right um it can reinforce a lot of mechanics and it, it helps establish a mood and depend depending on what your game is is about and like that may be very important or it may not be very important but sound can play a big part in kind of like making your game be what you want it to be if people had to teach themselves your expertise what resources would you recommend they use Ah, what resources? That's a good question. There's a, there's this website called designingsound.org. So designingsound.org is it's about sound design in general, but I feel like it has a very strong focus on game audio. And it has interviews uh, there. It has like reviews of sound, uh, you know, sound effects libraries. It has a lot of stuff that can help you know, somebody who's starting or somebody who knows. I, I read it all the time. I got interviewed there, I don't know, like a year ago. And it was, it was very cool. It's a very good website. It definitely helped me understand more when I was uh, starting out. I I usually check out this other website called the Reaper blog. Reaper is one of the main softwares that I use. And Reaper is a very... How do you say? It's a very good tool for sound design specifically. I would definitely recommend it over other DAWs, which are other kind of like main software for doing sound, like Pro Tools or Logic. Okay. So I the Reaper blog has a lot of information on how to get the most out of Reaper. And like I said, Reaper is probably the strongest DAW or one of the strongest DAWs when it comes to making sound design and, and sound design for games specifically. What are your key principles for better game development? Uh, one of the things is, if I do something, will I be proud of it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it means that a lot of times I take a lot more time than, than I should on projects, but it's because I do care about, I, you know, I care about the projects a lot. I care about my work a lot. And, you know, not every job requires that much amount of effort and care because some things, you know, some things do merit that. Some things are... A, a little bit less uh, demanding, uh, but for the most part, I just like to feel very proud of my work. So I try to take time and effort into making sure that whatever I produce, 
I can feel proud of, right? And it's something that I can show off on my on my website. It's, it's something that uh, meets my own standards and not just some other developer that may not know as much about audio. Uh, so their standards are going to be lower because, you know, they know they know a bit less uh, because it's not their discipline. So it's like I just try to make sure that what I create is up to my own standards. So I guess another key principle is to always be learning. You know, uh, like you said, always be pushing yourself. Definitely, like there's 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 a lot to learn in this industry, and within each discipline, there's always new tools to learn and uh, new techniques. Um, so basically, yeah, always always be trying to keep up to date with what's going on. If, if you have some downtime. How how can you use that downtime to you know uh, stu- study up on whatever you can in it and you know in it at any given moment? Yes, keep learning. Now, creating a game can be very long and difficult. Like you said, you, you know you take a long time sometimes to make the perfect audio. Now, give us a personal experience of your most difficult moment, and it could be an obstacle or emotion you have to overcome. Be detailed and and give us that story. <laughs> Okay, so with the game, everything that was that was a very hard game to work on, and it's because there was there's so much content on that game, and basically it's a game that lets you be anything in the universe, and there's a, you know that not not only does the universe have a lot of content, let's say you know an artist has to create a bunch of assets, a lot of objects that are gonna be in you know in the game, so that's content, right? But another thing that that to take to take into account when you're thinking about kind of like trying to simulate the universe, uh, which is you know the game is not a simulation, but let's just go with that word. And it's it's about the amount of systems that are involved in in a game like everything. So it's not only creating content, which is the sound effects that I'm creating, but also figuring out all the different audio systems that are going to go into this game. And a game like everything. There's a lot of little things that by themselves are kind of like not amazing, but it's when they all, all these things come together that it starts to create a soundscape that is, that is pleasant, that is surprising, and that is entertaining. And so basically, when I started the game, I had to create a bunch of small sound effects. I seen, all right, I make a goat here. I make a tree sound. I make, I don't know, a, a shoe. I have to create all these small sound effects that by themselves, they're not very motivating, right? They're, they're not very interesting. I don't feel a sense of accomplishment by creating the sound of a shoe, right? But it's not until all these sounds came together that I started to actually realize, oh, okay, this, this is sounding good. Now I can feel um, that reward of being proud of my work, right? But it took a very long time to get to the point where I could feel proud of my work because it took a lot of content. I, I, I needed to create a lot of content to, to get to that point. So I realized that, that that little motivation that you get when you create something that's very cool and it's intense. In, let's say you spend a day or two and you create something really cool and you're like, yeah, and you feel very proud. Yeah. <laughs> that feeling takes you a long time throughout your work like like uh, you get that feeling every couple days or let's say once a week or something but that that feeling is what carries you over to making the effort that you're that you're putting into the game but when you have when you're working on a game like everything where i i I, i'm not able to feel that within months like for months let's say in three months i don't have that feeling because again i'm making small little parts of a bigger soundscape then that was challenging. <laughs> that was very challenging, not being able to ride that feeling of being proud. Uh, so you know, uh, I you know I questioned my 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 work a lot. I was like, man, is this game any good? Is is what I'm doing for this game any good? Because I'm not getting that feeling mm-hmm. at all, right? So, but of course, in the end, this is this is the game that I'm most that I've been most invested in. It took a long time. It took a lot of work. But there's a, there's so many special things about this game. There there's so many aspects of the sound design that are very different from one another. Like there's a, a lot of different levels that sound completely mm-hmm. different from one another. There's there's the element of the narration of Alan Watts, which that in itself took a lot of work. 
uh, because we needed to take old recordings and basically clean them up. And uh, and, uh, and I, I was the one who had to do that. And I there was old recordings that, you know, uh, were from different lectures, different moments in time, and I needed to make them sound all consistent and not like they were coming from, you know, an, an old busted recording. So there, there are just so many aspects of that game that it was just hard and it took a long time. But when it, when I, I, and like I said, when it finally all came together, that's the moment where I could feel proud and be like, okay, this game took a year of my time. Uh, I mean, like probably like 15 months. And, and now finally I, I get it. I'm proud of what I made. Uh, and I'm very invested and I care, uh, I care about it a lot. Uh, but it took a long time to feel that. And that was what, what do you want to make sure a game does take away from your experience? Because it sounded like you were like really overwhelmed and it took a long time for you to feel that motivation. What do you want to make sure they take away from this? And I guess from that experience, is, I mean, it's, this is not something new, right? A lot of people that, that have gone through any hardship or, or like, you know, making something you care about is, is always going to be hard. Making something, you know, hard, like uh, great things take a lot of effort. Right, but the idea is keep pushing yourself. Like, uh, push yourself past these periods that you may feel even depressed. Right, you may feel totally unmotivated, and it happens to almost every creative person. Uh, periods of just having no motivation. Like sometimes you don't believe that you can even do what you can do, and and this is something that you can that you can start practicing. You know, from very early on in your career is the whole idea of self doubt which we all, you know, we all experience it. And and this is something that I feel like distinguishes people that actually become successful from people that don't try. And it's, it's, it's the idea to look past the self-doubt. It's like, you know, it's there, you feel it. But even though you're, you're, there's still something that pushes you forward because in the end, it is better to try and fail than not to try exactly. at all, right? And so I think that makes a huge difference being being able to just go for it and and see what happens and keep pushing yourself until you can't push yourself anymore. Oui, oui. Yeah, this episode is like pushing your limits, all about pushing your limits. <laughs> what yes, what yes. is the best investment you've made? And it could be investment of money, time or energy. And how did you decide to make that investment? A discipline and profession like sound design takes a lot of investment just because there's a lot of stuff that monetarily we need to buy. You know, there's a lot of equi- audio equipment, there's microphones, there's speakers, there's sound libraries themselves are very expensive. This is a very expensive discipline as compared to like, let's say a programmer. A programmer doesn't need as much. Like with if you give a laptop to a programmer, for the most part, they'll be fine, right? And, you know, I, I'm not saying that it does, uh, other equipment wouldn't make a programmer's life easier. But the idea is a programmer doesn't need as much. So, you know, I can say, okay, so I did invest a lot of money early on in my career. Uh, as in, I took a credit card, right? And But I wouldn't say that's the biggest investment just because, I don't know, I don't want to put money in that <laughs> category. But I, I say the biggest investment is your time. As in, you know, we were young, right? Uh, we have friends. There's always hanging out. There's always people getting together. There's always parties. There's always stuff going on. If you live in a city, that there's stuff going on. So when you when you're you know when you're starting out, it means that you are most likely working somewhere else, unless you have you know unless you are lucky enough to have somebody who supports you. And if you do, hey, good for you. But a lot of us don't have mm-hmm. that, right? Which means that you have to not only sacrifice. Uh, the time that you would like to invest in your career, working on something else that is in your career, but also your, you have to sacrifice your free time to actually put, put in time on what you actually want to do. And that's an investment, right? Saying, you know, saying that you don't want to go to a concert or some, or just get together with your friends because you want to sit down and watch some tutorials on how to make games. That's, that's, that's sacrifice, right? And that is an investment that you're doing on yourself. So I would say that was the biggest investment. There came to a point where I just didn't hang out a lot. Uh, I just didn't find 
that doing that was going to benefit me a lot because I, you know, I was serving tables, right? I, I used to be a server, which, which was good, a good job to have just because of how flexible it was. So a flexible job is a good thing to have when you're starting out in that career because it lets you actually focus on what you want to focus and, and you can uh, move your time around and how you see fit with, a, with a, work, a job like that. But basically, yeah, I didn't want to be a server five years. You know, when I saw myself five years down the road, I didn't want to be a server. That, that thought depressed me. So I needed to see, you know, okay, where do I want to be? I'm a server now. So how do I have to, how do I invest my time the most efficiently so that I, so that, I don't know, five years from now, I'm exactly where I want to be. So basically just time. On I absolutely love how you went into detail that and that you're absolutely correct. Cause you will have to sacrifice your time. Like me, I work a full time job and I can't just come home and start playing video games or go to the movies. And, you know, I, I want to do other stuff like this podcast and see right now I'm taking a podcast. Yes. I take my time to interview you and other uh, people so I can make this podcast happen. And you're just going to have to sacrifice your free time into uh, work on other goals you want to accomplish. And yeah, uh, yeah, like you said, I don't want to be working the same job the rest of my life. I want to be doing something I love. And you're just going to have to sacrifice your free yeah. time and invest in yourself to do this. And yeah. you are on point about everything. Yeah. And sacrifice, you know, sacrifice is a strong word. And, but the idea is maybe investment is a, is yeah. a better word because, okay, yes, it does take sacrifice, but the idea, you do feel good about it. You feel good when you see results, right? You, you like every six months, you look back to where you were six months ago. And if you are closer to your goal, then you're, you're, you're doing it right. So it's like, just check yourself every six months. Where are you at? Are, are you closer to your goal? And if you are, then you're good. Just keep working. Keep doing what you're now, doing. Now, what is the one thing you are most excited about today? Okay. So right now I'm getting, I'm getting, you know, the opportunity to work on a, VR project, which I haven't, I haven't uh, done yet. And I'm working with an, a really amazing audio tool. Uh, for, like it's the second time I've worked with it, but I've been wanting to work with this tool for so long. because It's so powerful and it just makes my life so much easier because it gives the power to me in the sense of I'm able to program a lot of the logic that the audio systems are going to have without relying as much on programmers. And this, this, you know, for audio people, this, this, this program is wise. is is a very famous program. But just be, just being able, like, I've been working on indie games mostly, and for the most part, a lot of indie games or indie developers, they like to make their own audio tools and or use, you know, tools that don't require a lot of money, right, to pay for a license. So I haven't gotten the chance to really dig into this software. And doing doing so within this project that I'm doing now, uh, and that it's also VR, it, it just lets me do stuff that I've been wanting to do for a while. And it just feels good. Uh, being able to use a tool likewise is very, it's very refreshing. And just doing VR in general is, is very exciting and very interesting. Awesome. So don't forget game devs. You can check out gamedevloadout.com for all the show notes and links that we talked about. You can also subscribe to my email list to get a top 10 tip for game development. And now we have reached crunch time where Eduardo will be giving us a ton of valuable information at a fast pace. Eduardo, are you ready to crush it and release this show? Yes. Go what for was it. holding you back from becoming a game developer? What was holding me back? I guess a, last, a, a lack of focus. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Going to GDC. Uh, that I needed to go to GDC. Like when I first started, I didn't even know what GDC was. And GDC, for those that you you know that don't know, is Game Developers Conference. It happens, happens every year around springtime in San Francisco. And basically within my first year of working in the games industry, somebody told me that I needed to be there. And ever, that was 2011, uh, that was 2012, I think. And the first time I went and I've gone every year and definitely. And anybody who wants to be in this industry should be at GDC. Um, what's a personal habit that contributes to your success? Man, this is maybe not a good answer. I see not a positive answer, but I'm pretty hard on myself in terms of what I expect out of myself in terms of my quality, the quality mm -hmm. of my work. But it's like, I try not to be super harsh 
but I am demanding of myself. And I think people notice because people notice that the work is good, right? People notice that the quality is good. So I would say a habit is having high standards for myself. I think that's actually a really good habit because you expect the best from yourself. You know, you, you never want any less of yourself. And I think that's a great habit. Yes. As long as, as long as you don't feel depressed because you're not the best mm. ever, then, then that's good. Just, the, you know, there can be a point where you can be too harsh on yourself. But anyway, yes, just, just expect a lot from yourself and, and work towards Share it. Share an internet resource. So I had told you about designingsound.org. I had told you about Reaper blog. There is, for audio people, there's this really cool website called groove3.com. And it's all tutorials about audio. It can be any plugin that you want, any software that you want. And it's most likely there. And that was a really good resource uh, starting out. And still is, because there's so much stuff in there. Uh, it's really Awesome, good. awesome. Now, this next question is a bit of a doozy, so take your time. Imagine you okay. woke up the next morning in a brand new world and you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have today. Your food and shelter is taken care of and you have a laptop. What would you do step by step on the path to become a great game developer? If I didn't have any obligations, I'll probably start making music again, which means I would start just trying to create music with it, with, with the hopes of you know, making some music professionally for video games because I used to do a lot of music. My background was in music. I just kind of like haven't done it in a while uh, because I, I focused on sound design. And, you know, one of your other questions was it's like, what was keeping me from being a game developer? And that was a lack mm -hmm. of focus. So I decided to focus. But if I don't have that many obligations and, I, and all of a sudden I'm in this new world, I would like to start making music again with the hopes of making music professionally for video games. I don't know what that would look like. I can't give you a step-by-step -step, uh, answer to what I would do, but that would, that would be my new direction. Ooh, thank you so much, Eduardo. Uh, give a parting piece of guidance in how we can connect with you. Um, I guess I would reiterate the idea of self-doubt. We all feel it. And it's there. It's always there. Just get comfortable with it and don't let that stop you. Uh, because alongside that self-doubt and those moments where you feel like you don't know anything, there will be moments where you feel like you're on top of the world and you are the best whatever career or whatever professional profession you are. You know, there will always be moments where you feel like you're the best around. And there will always be moments where you feel like you don't know anything and you don't even know how people pay you to do what you're doing. So just get comfortable with that and understand that that's just not, that's a normal part of the creative process. And how can we connect with you? Well, okay. So I am on Twitter and I am, uh, it is at Ed Sound Design. And my website is edsounddesign.com. And I think those are probably the two, you know, I mean, I'm on Facebook and it's Eduardo Ortiz Frau. But if you go to my website, which is Ed, as in Eduardo, edsounddesign.com, you should find all my uh, social media stuff. Awesome. Eduardo, it has been a pleasure. Go check him out, Game Devs. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. And for that, we are truly grateful. And until then, we will catch you next time. Thank you, Game Devs, for listening. And remember that knowledge is only potential power. Execution is the game. I'm so excited to announce that I am doing a giveaway sponsored by Game Dev Underground, a marketing and connection platform for indie developers that helps you build, finish, and launch better games. The winner gets a one-hour consultation with the founder, Tim Ruswick, which he was a guest on episode four. This is over $1,000 in value, and it can be yours. All you have to do is rate and review the podcast. That's it. Check out my show notes for more details. And until then, keep on making games and I will catch you on the next episode. Bye.